the stretches, stretches, stretches. In Spanish is estiramientos. In Catalan, estiramientos. The stretch is a concept. It is in a scalar. First, it's in a scalar. In a scalar. Second, it's important. Don't forget that. It's associated to a certain direction. So, if I want to know the stretch for a certain particle p, I can speci I should specify in what direction I want to compute the stretch. So, in what direct direction the stretch or the stretching takes place. So, it's associated to one vector. That vector specifies one direction, just the direction, not the distance. That vector, which is here, capital T, imagine that I have a particle P, a particle Q, and that direction that, use, that joins particle P and Q is defined by a unit vector, unit, modulus 1. Look, not infinitesimal, unit vector that specifies the direction, which is defined as capital T. Okay? Okay, so now let's consider then particle P and the stretch, what we are defining the stretch, in, a, in point P in the direction T. That's why I put lambda T. Okay? This is what? Nothing else than the following. How much is the final distance of these two particles at the current configuration? The distance of P, Q, P, and P prime, Q prime, distance in general is indicated by an upper bar. Okay? Divided by the original distance, P, Q bar. So it's, in other words, the ratio of differential of S, small s, divided by differential of capital S. So this is something something. How much is the length per unit of original length? You see? How much is the new distance, the final distance, per unit, it's per unit, per unit of original distance? So that is the definition of a stretch. A stretch is, in a certain direction, the value of the distance of two particles before two to neighborhood particles, before the deformation at the current configuration, per unit of distance at the reference configuration. That is just strictly written here. Okay? Look, I could also talk this lambda and associate this lambda to the direction of these two particles, not in the reference configuration, but in the present configuration, which should be different, could be different. Okay? So, I mean, the, the result would be the same. So the result is the distance differential of S, small, divided per unit of distance differential of capital S. I could call them lambda T capital T if I want to refer to the direction in the reference configuration, or a small t if I want to refer to the direction of the same particles at the present configuration. Okay? Sometimes we will skip the subindex. We will skip them. But you should keep always in mind that stretches are always related to one point, because of course the stretch could be different in that for the particle than for another particle. And secondly, stretches are a directional entity. So it, it's not the, st the, st the stretches would not be the same if I now consider another direction here, another t, which will turn out in another small t, and the measure could be different. So stretches are point dependent and direction dependent. Let's investigate the range in which the stretches live. Look, what happens is by some when, by some mean, the, the body, these two particles, have been so compressed that at the very end they are, I mean, differential of S is equal to zero. Okay? Could be. I mean, imagine that I just pressing the limit. What is the limit I can get two particles? Okay? So in that case, how much would be the stretches? Zero, because differential of S is zero. Okay? On the other hand, the other limit is when that distance, capital S, refer to two particles that are very, very close to each other in the reference configuration, but then become a differential S, which is much larger. So the other limit is infinity. They are always positive values. Stretches are always positive because they always refer to distances. These are always positive values. 
but they can range between zero and infinity. Okay? Well, that is the one concept. Another concept that approaches to what you are familiar with, the elongation. Elongation or unit elongation. Elongation is, in, in, in Catalan we said, allargamiento unitario o alargamiento unitario, extensión unitaria en español. What does it mean? It's something which is just similar to what we said before. We have the two particles and now instead of in interested on in what is the length final distance per unit of original distance, I just want to see, talk about increment of distance. So I just want to know what is the increment of distance of these two particles. Well, the original distance, the final distance is differential of S, the original distance is differential of capital S, so the difference would be how much the distance has increased per unit of original distance. Okay? So that is what we will denote is in a scalar that we use will denote by epsilon. Epsilon. And that should be, strictly speaking, accompanied by a direction subindex that talks about what direction, either in the material or in the spatial uh, configuration, we refer to. And is defined by that. Well, these are two engineering measures. Engineers 200 years ago just def decided that these were going to be useful measures for designing st structural structures. One is the stretch. Final length per unit of original length in a certain direction. The other is elongation. Increment of length per unit of original distance. Of course, they are related with each other. So we see that, of course, if we elaborate onto that and we just compute epsilon in a certain direction, is that now we divide that by this, minus that by this, which is one, we see that this is lambda and this is one. So the stretch. The, the unit elongation and the stretches are related through this equation, epsilon equal lambda minus one. Okay? So that means that the, strain, the, the unit elongations leave, take the value at, at, as minimum minus one. When lambda is equal to zero, epsilon equal minus one. When lambda is equal to infinito, infinity, uh, epsilon is equal to infinity. It's important for you to get acquainted with the physical meaning of that. For instance, what implies lambda equal one? <coughs> lambda equal one, the stretch equal one, means that the distance hasn't changed. So final differential of s equal to original differential of s, and the ratio is one. Okay? So the increment of distance is how much? Zero. 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 And the increment of distance. So in that case, epsilon is equal to zero. So in the case that there is no stretching, Epsilon, lambda is equal to 1. But this no is better described by epsilon equals 0. So elongation equals 0 means that there is no enlargement. Okay? And, for instance, what happens when lambda is positive, greater than 1? That means that epsilon is greater than 0. So that means that the the, 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 the segment has enlarged positively, okay? And epsilon smaller than zero means that the segment has shortened. So now we see that epsilon is maybe a little easier for us to remember the physical meaning, the unit elongation, because epsilon equals zero, whenever we find that in a particle in a certain direction, the, 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 the elongations are zero, means that, that there has been no an increase of, of, of distance. Epsilon positive means it has increased the distance. Epsilon negative means that it has decreased the distance. But look that, according to that, epsilon, the smaller value of epsilon is minus one. For epsilon equal minus one, th means that the original distance has reduced to zero. Okay? So epsilon cannot be epsilon the, 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 the unit elongation cannot be minus infinity. Hmm? Cannot be minus infinity. Uh, there is, of course, a direct relation of these measures, the stretch and the unit elongation, and the general measure of strains, which are provided by the 
Lagrange or material strain tensor or the Almansi or spatial strain tensor. <coughs> well, it's proven here, right? That there's just a little elaboration of that. So we can compute, in fact, the stretches and the strain, the unit elongations corresponding to certain directions, either in the reference configuration or the corresponding in the current configurations, in terms of these directions and, of course, the values of the uh, strain tensors. The proof is relatively simple. This is a formula that we obtain saying that the increment in terms of length, square length, uh, of the segments around a given particle can be computed in terms of the uh, uh, spatial, uh, material strain tensor E. Then we we'll replace differential of x by t, the unit tensor, the unit vector in that direction, times the length differential of capital S, or differential of small x is equal to unit vector t times the length of the vector differential of S. We're replacing here. And then we just divide both terms by differential of S squared. And then this is differential of S squared gives rise to lambda squared. That's precisely the definition for the stretches, for the stretch in the direction t. So we obtain this formula that says lambda squared is e minus 1 equal to t e t. And from that, of course, we can solve as lambda equal the square root of 1 plus 2 t e t. Okay? And epsilon, which is lambda minus 1, would be that way. The same can be done also uh, looking for the second formula in terms of the spatial strain tensor e. So finally, we arrive at these formulas, which is logical. I mean, uh, the tensors, the strain measures, the strain tensors, the material and the spatial strain tensor, uh, through this formula, inform about what? Changes of distances of segments in any directions around a particle. So if I know this tensor in a, a, for a given particle in a certain time, just by multiplying for a given direction around this particle, t, e, t, right and, and left, and then doing this operation and subtracting one, I obtain the elongation in that point here. So we can conclude that information about the elongation, the stretches in every direction, is kept in this capital E tensor. Also from this formula, we see that, that again, the stretches and the unit elongations in any point of the sp space, in any point of the space, if we know the uh, special uh, strain tensor or Manson strain tensor E, just by multiplying by the unit vector in any direction, multiplying by two, subtracting it from one, taking the, the square root, doing the inverse, we can obtain the stretch and subtracting one, we can obtain the unit elongation corresponding to that segment. So, conclusion, we are approaching our goal. We wanted something that informed about distances. And in fact, we see that the two tensors, the material E, capital E, and the spatial small e strain tensor have this information. And we can recover this information by simple operations like that one, the ones I showed here. Okay?